Hello there folks, PMDB here. Last night I was in a bad mood. I just get deflated sometimes when I see such little views for my videos and I feel like, oh, what's the point? Welcome to Paul Michael DB. Feel free to check out my original channel, Paul MDB, where you'll find over 1,000 PMDB videos from every year I've been on YouTube. Hi, my name is Paul Michael David Bain. I'm very free, single, any single ladies out there. It is Sunday, 29th of November. I'm watching a guy called Killer Whale Channel on YouTube while gathering my thoughts on what to say about SummerSlam 2000. He's currently watching Donald Trump, President Trump. SummerSlam 2000. In my opinion, was the best 2000 pay per view. I gave it a 10 out of 10. When, and this is not a show I've watched much. I didn't think much of it in the past. I knew, I knew it had an outstanding tables, ladders, and chairs match, solid main event with big time storylines, some of the most memorable ones. But when I rewatched this going through it, Especially when you get to the Jerry Lawler Taz match, which I enjoyed. Some people didn't like that feud at all. I didn't actually like it at the time. I thought they were making Taz to be a bit of a joke by this point. Um, whom, you know, debuted so dominant, but, you know. But Steve Blackman, Shane McMahon was good. Shane done his usual stunts, memorable stunts. Chris Benoit, Chris Jericho had another classic matchup the tables ladders and chairs match that stole the show and apart from the Kat and terry match you know the from the fourth match onwards to the end including kane versus the undertaker which i thought was decent and uh, uh, one of the best triple threat matches i've seen in the rock versus triple h versus kurt angle all three men had tremendous chemistry together. That word chemistry gets used quite a lot. But I thought this match was outstanding. And it just seemed to go up a notch and you know, with every match and peeking at the tables, ladders and chairs match. So this was solid ten out of ten for me. Um my top five go like this, Kurt Angle in fifth place, along with Triple H in fourth place. This was a tough top five to do because a lot of people, wrestlers on this show, were bringing their A game and were having these great memorable moments like Shane McMahon and The Rock, but even a couple of the wrestlers that should maybe be in this top five miss out because there was just, there were so much great performances on this show. My top three go with three of the participants that were in the table sliders and chairs match. Edge, Bubba Ray Dudley and Jeff Hardy get my number one spot. As for me, he uh, had the most memorable spots in the match. And this was at a time when the table sliders and chairs thing was, it was the first one ever. These type of matches were still fresh. They weren't overdone. They were exciting. And I thought overall SummerSlam, you couldn't ask much more for a pair of few big time stars in the show everybody had something going on it seemed a top main event with great main eventers and triple h kurt angle and the rock they were all you know brought their a game and um yeah it's, it's SummerSlam 2000 one of the the best pair of views ever reason number one my internet connection is horrendous. I can't go live. Well, technically, I can go live, but it would just buffer, buffer, buffer after being live for five months for that reason. And the second reason I don't want to go on live panels is because I don't want to. Now, watching a guy called Sty North, I sometimes watch him. He tells some great stories in his regular live streams while gathering my thoughts for Unforgiven 2000. The return of Stone Cold Steve Austin, who's number one in my top five, spoiler alert. 
Unforgiven, I rated it. It was one of my lower rated pair of reviews of 2000. Just getting a 6 out of 10. Without the return of Stone Cold Steve Austin, this show would have been a 4 or 5 out of 10. It was all about Stone Cold Steve Austin returning here. Full time return after a 10 month absence. Um, you know, like I say, Unforgiven, without the return of Steve here, was a very unmemorable show. But the portion of Stone Cold Steve Austin returning, all the segments backstage with Kevin Kelly, Kurt Angle, The Rock, the three stunners to Shane McMahon. Steve Blackman took an awesome stunner here. Massive pop when he returned. JR got excited, debuting his disturbed theme. It was all good. All good. And, uh, you know, it gets major points for Unforgiven. Uh, the main event was a failed four way match between The Rock, Chris Benoit, Kane, and The Undertaker. It just felt like it was thrown together. Um, it was it was it was an entertaining and enjoyable match to watch, but it, it wasn't you know not someone something I would tell my friend about you know come and check out this fail four way match you're really missing out in life. No, it wasn't that type of match. Triple H also took on Kurt Angle here. They had a great storyline leading up into this match, and uh, yeah, they had a fantastic. They were involved in the triple threat match at SummerSlam, like I mentioned earlier in this video. They had a, you know, it was an outstanding triple threat match, and this match was, you know, good stuff. But overall, Unforgiven was quite a disappointing show. I, I really thought I was going to enjoy it more. I remember really liking it. I think it was because of the whole Steve Austin's back, you know, and it delivered. And it felt like a feel good moment to be a wrestling fan at the time. But rewatching this, overall, very disappointing show. In saying all of that, my top five are, for Unforgiven are fifth place Chris Benoit, fourth place The Rock, third place Kurt Angle, second place Triple H, and in first place Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs>